Hi class, welcome to our lesson on writing argumentative thesis statements. This is going to be a lesson that will apply to all of the thesis statements this semester. And it's probably going to be one of the most important things you learn in this class because no matter what paper you're writing, you have to have a thesis statement. So just a quick overview of what we're going to talk about. Again, like I said previously, this is one of the most important things you're going to learn in this class. If you don't remember anything else from this class, please remember how to write a thesis statement. It's going to help you through writing any paper. So we're going to walk through the steps today of writing a thesis. Normally this is something I would do in class and we would workshop them, um, but given our remote situation, I'm going to give you an example as I go through the slides. So pay attention to how I shape the thesis from just an idea into a formal argumentative thesis statement. And that's what we're going to be working on. So I think I have a discussion board for you all to give each other feedback. I'll give you feedback on your grades for your thesis. Um, and then we can talk about them during class as well. So what exactly is a thesis statement? A thesis statement is one sentence that describes the main argument and the supporting points for your essay. So there's lots of different ways to do a thesis statement. I personally like the three-pronged thesis approach. Some professors don't like that but I feel that it's very helpful for organizing thoughts and organizing your paper. I do it myself. I still write papers for my doctorate degree and I almost always have a three-pronged thesis statement just because it helps me figure out exactly what I wanna say. Sometimes I'll go back and revise it, but somewhere along the way I have three points that I wanna talk about, no matter how long the paper is. Um, if it's a 20-page paper, I might have three really broad topics, but I still have those three prongs. So your thesis is, it's the backbone of your essay. That's the metaphor I like to use because your thesis can't, or excuse me, your paper can't stand on its own without a thesis statement. Um, if you don't have a thesis, you don't have an argument, which means you don't really have a paper. You just have a bunch of stuff put on some pages and hoping that it comes together in an essay. Um, so the backbone, again, just like a human, right? We can't stand upright without our backbone or if our backbone is weak, you know, we might have problems like scoliosis or... Um, a hunchback or something like that. So same thing with your essay. So you might have a thesis, but it might not be strong, but think of it as the backbone. So that's why we start with this. I have you come up with your topics first. You might do a little bit of background research, and then you'll come up with your thesis statement before you write anything else in the paper. So some people, again, teach it differently, but I think this really helps you fill out your outline that we're gonna go over, and it helps you figure out exactly what you wanna say in your paper. So as I said, this is the most important step. That's why I have a whole slide just on doing thesis statements, or excuse me, a whole presentation on doing just thesis statements, because without it, you have no central argument to your paper or central point. Every essay you write must have a thesis. Now, it may not be an argumentative thesis, depending what kind of paper you write. So for your first essay, you're going to be doing um, an exploratory essay. So it might not be argumentative, but you will still have a point that you're trying to make um, and you'll have three things you're going to talk about in your exploratory paper. So the first thing you want to do is choose a topic. So I'm going to have a whole other presentation on this as well, how to pick a topic. But for today, just pick um, something that you're really interested in and that fits the scope of the assignment. Sometimes an instructor might give you topics. I don't like to give students topics. I've done it in the past, but a lot of times it's very restrictive and students don't want to write about something that they're forced to write about. So you can literally, as I said um, in some earlier presentations, write about anything that you want with the exception of abortion, gun control, and legalizing marijuana. Anything else is fair game as long as you can make an argument about it for your research paper. So again, if you need help picking a topic, let me know, but just start writing down things you want to learn about. Um, I've had students write about all kinds of different things. I'm going to give you a sample topic in this presentation but just think about what you might wanna write about. And then you wanna make some kind of assertion. Now for the exploratory paper, we're not gonna make the assertion yet. You're just going to start exploring that topic. Uh, but you wanna take some kind of a position, even though you're just exploring it, find some kind of angle um, or approach to the topic. So let's say your topic is, for example, um, sustainability. So you're interested in the environment, you're interested in going green, but that's really broad, right? So you want to kind of take some kind of position on that and start exploring both sides of that position or that viewpoint. Um, so let's say you want to talk about zero waste. I had a student write a really awesome paper last semester on zero waste, and she did all this research, and she looked at both sides 
of this in her research. Uh, she ultimately ended up going with, you know, zero waste is the way to go in the future. And she found all these resources for that. Um, but she had to talk about zero waste in terms of something specific, because that's really broad to write a five page paper about. Um, so you want to find that kind of unique angle or viewpoint about the topic, not just the topic in general. And then choose three to four reasons why. Um, so again, the exploratory essay is going to be a little bit different, um, but you want to Start to narrow it down um, to three or four reasons why you chose this and be specific. And again, eventually your topic is going to have to be debatable. So we're not writing about things that are facts already, that have already been proven. Um, you want to write about something that someone could debate with you about. Otherwise, there's no point in writing about things that are already proven. So this is the example thesis. So I thought... Why not write about remote learning since that's what we're doing right now? It's something that actually is pretty interesting for me as a teacher because we're going to be remote for at least the summer and the fall semesters. So why not write about remote learning? So I said, okay, I want to, I want to research this. I want to learn more about this. I know a little bit about it because we've been doing it. I'm also, I've been a remote student for over two years now. So I'm like, well, what about from the teacher perspective? So I said, okay, remote learning, that's pretty broad though, right? So I could write about remote learning in general, which is very broad, and that could be, you know, a book. <laughs> um, and there have been books written about online learning. Um, I could write about it in elementary schools, middle schools, daycare, kindergarten. Uh, but because I'm a college professor, I said, let me talk about college classes because I have a little bit of experience, but I've only been doing it for, you know, one semester. So that's what I want to learn more about. So we're going to talk about it in college classes. And then you want to take some kind of a stance on that topic. So I'm going to say that remote learning is beneficial for college students, which could be a bit controversial. I know some students are not happy about learning remotely, but there are some reasons why it might be really beneficial for college students, especially in today's day and age of instant gratification. Uh, so I came up with some reasons. I sat down and had to really think about it, but I said, what are some reasons that this is good um, or beneficial? I said one is taking initiative. So when you're an online student, you really have to take the initiative to reach out to the professor or to, you know, look up something on your own that you might not be able to ask in real time during a class while you're working. Um, so taking initiative is definitely one. It's going to teach you how to advocate for yourself as a remote learner because I can't see you, right? We have our WebExes and whatnot, but for the most part, I'm not seeing you. I can't pick up on anything that's happening. Uh, we don't have the same kind of connection. So you have to take initiative to advocate for yourself and to maybe look something up that you would normally just ask me during class in an organic conversation. Another reason that remote learning is beneficial, kind of on the coattails of taking initiative, but it's learning autonomy. And you really have to be autonomous, which just means to kind of be on your own in your learning. You're not in a learning environment in the same way. We do try to keep that environment there, but it's really a different type of learning environment. You have to be self-motivated um, to do that. And another benefit is that you can work at your own pace for the most part. Um, so we do have to meet during class time, and I think it's beneficial for us to meet during class time. But if you're a night owl, you can do your work at night instead of, you know, during the day. Um, or if your work schedule keeps changing, you can do your work whenever you need to. It's not necessarily due at the time class starts. So you can work at your own pace. Um, if you have an asynchronous class, even better than for working at your own pace. Um, not all classes are synchronous meeting at the same time. Um, you can kind of work when whatever is convenient for you. So we have a topic. We have a stance. We have some reasons. It's specific. It's debatable, right? Someone could say, you know what, remote learning is really bad for college students and probably have some pretty good reasons for that. Um, I don't think it's all good, but I think there are some benefits to it. And I have, um, I have some reasons, right? So we're ready to move on to the next couple of stages for writing thesis statements. So I'm going to develop your thesis. So we have, like I said, we have the topic, we have some reasons, we have a stance. So now you want to choose some kind of unique perspective. So for me, that might go back to me selecting colleges, right? That's something different. Not everyone's writing about that because a lot of students are already online. Whereas in an elementary school, you know, that's, that's something that's new. So I'm choosing my unique perspective. You could choose something that's different or even unpopular, right? My opinion might be unpopular that learning remotely is 
beneficial for college students. Notice I didn't say better though. I didn't say it's better than face-to-face -face learning because I don't believe that. I think face-to-face -face learning is very important. Um, and I think you get more out of that, but you know, I think there are some benefits to it. So I put beneficial, not better. So it's specific and again, that might be an unpopular viewpoint. Uh, I probably, it would have been much easier for me to come up with reasons why remote learning is bad. <laughs> um, and I don't think it's all bad, but I think it, there's both sides to that story, which makes it debatable. Um, but you want to make sure the opinion is valid, too. You can't just say something that you're like, oh, this is going to be really cool and really different. But then it's not valid. Um, so I'm trying to think of one that I've had. Um, I've had some controversial ones that I'm not going to mention in this PowerPoint that I had to kind of talk students down from. Um, but you don't just want to say something like, you know, I'm going to make an argument that the sky is green. Like, okay, maybe someone with color blindness or color distortion might see the sky as green, but that's not a valid opinion or a valid stance, right? And again, that's a silly example. Um, you always want to make sure your opinion is valid and that there's going to be evidence to back up what you're saying. So. When you do pre-writing or brainstorming, um, that's usually how I recommend starting before you even get into your thesis, is just to jot down your thoughts and then go back to that later. You might find that you wrote something you thought was ridiculous at the time, and now you're like, oh, that might actually work. So talking about that topic with other people might give you that same perspective. And that's what we're going to do during some of our class sessions and in your discussion boards on Canvas is talking about what we're writing about. Um, you're doing this research, you're writing about things that you're really interested in. I want you to get used to sharing your ideas. That's really what we're missing, right? Uh, quote unquote, missing in this remote learning environment is sharing of ideas. But we're going to do that in our WebEx classes. So I want you to start talking about your topics with other people. Also, um, when you write out your thesis, if it seemed boring or dull, it's probably going to need some revision in this area of choosing a unique perspective or taking a different kind of angle on that topic. So here's my example thesis, right? So how can I make this unique or different? As I said, there's been plenty of stuff written on online learning and remote learning, um, all these different terminologies for what we're doing. So could I bring up COVID-19, right? That would make it unique or different. Um, I'm sure people are writing about it, but it's still so new that not, not a lot of stuff is already out there on it. I could also look for some new reasons if I wanted to. Um, for now, I like it. I think it's pretty good. But if your topic is more generic um, or more broad, you might need to find that unique angle. So if you want to write about something like sustainability, there's a lot of stuff out there. That's a hot topic. You're going to have to find a unique angle if you want to say something different from what's already being said. So when we're developing our thesis, we also want to avoid announcing ourselves. Uh, I get this a lot with new students in college. They like to start off telling us that they're the writer of the paper with, I'm going to tell you about, or I'm going to argue that. Uh, we don't need I in that thesis. It's not correct because it's your paper. Your, pa your name's on the top and in every um, corner on the header. I know it's your paper. I know you're thinking that, or that's what you're going to tell me about, right? So it's a little bit redundant even. Um, if it's easier for you to start with that, you can, but make sure you cut that out before you submit a thesis for, to me because I'm just going to tell you to cut it off. Um, state your main point directly. When you start off, or even, even more so is I think. Um, if you're saying I think, that's not good either because you're not making a direct claim. You're just saying, well, this is what I think, but you're not telling people why they should think that, right? Um, you've done the research. This is your topic. Consider yourself the expert by the time you've read a bunch of articles on this. Um, so you can always start out with what I'd like to say is and then go back and delete that once you're done. So this is my first draft. So I had all my ideas jotted down and then I just put them into a basic fill in the blank argument plus reasons thesis. So remote, remote learning is beneficial for college students because they have to take initiative, learn to be autonomous, and can work at their own pace. So it's good, right? It works. I could put that in a paper, but it's a bit bland. Um, at least that's how I feel, right? It's like, okay, there's my argument, there's my reason. I need to jazz this up a little bit, give it a little bit of pizzazz, because I want to grab my audience's attention. I want them to want to keep reading, right? That's the whole point. If nobody wants to read your paper, they think your argument is dull, they're not going to keep reading. They're going to be like, okay, and then toss the paper aside. So 
that's where revising our thesis comes in. So again, this is the first draft. It's okay. It works. I could use it, but I want to revise it a little bit and give it a little bit more oomph. So once you have your draft, that first draft, just like that, and your first draft can just be argument plus reasons, then you want to ask yourself the following questions. You want to make sure it has an argument. If it doesn't, that's your first step is to revise it to make sure there's an argument. And then you want to make sure it has some reasons or divisions. So sometimes you'll hear those three things called reasons. Sometimes you'll hear them called divisions, depending on what type of paper you're writing. If you're not writing an argument paper, it's better, you're better off calling them divisions. Uh, so they're divisions of your topic. Once your thesis does what it's supposed to do, you have to make it concise. You have to eliminate wordiness. A lot of times our first draft of thesis is very wordy and unnecessary phrases. So uh, we use a method called the paramedic method if you're learning how to eliminate wordiness. Um, and there's a link in the PowerPoint to that. Um, you can also just Google it and it'll come up uh, paramedic method for editing sentences. And it's very tedious, but it does teach you how to get rid of extra words and unnecessary words. I feel like when we're in school, our teachers kind of encourage us to just write a bunch of words. Um, and a lot of times it, it becomes noise in our paper from our points. You know, I would rather your paper be just under the page limit or the word requirement for the directions and it be good than it be full of fluff. Um, and it's not even just fluff ideas, it's fluff words in your sentences that just detract from what you're doing. So this is my, my second draft here. So I put my first draft up there again, just to remind you, remote learning is beneficial for college students because they have to take initiative, learn to be autonomous, and can work at their own pace. So revised due to COVID-19, right? So I made that specific, I took that unique angle. Many college students have successfully adapted to remote learning. This learning style allows college students to take initiative and be autonomous in their learning, as well as to study at times during which they are most productive. So it's a little wordy, it could probably be cut out places, but see how it's a little bit more intriguing um, than just that first one that's kind of like blah, for lack of a better word. Um, right, I made it very specific. Um, and I didn't say any of the bad things about COVID-19 and remote learning. A lot of students did successfully adapt. Not everybody, um, but a lot of students did. Overall, my students that did not withdraw passed my courses because they were able to adapt. Um, for these reasons, All right? So then I'm going to go and find research to support that. But it sounds much better. It sounds more unique, and it sounds like it might draw more people into my argument, hopefully. So the last thing you want to do, I'm not going to put an example of this in the slide um, because I didn't write out a whole introduction paragraph. I haven't done any research on this. It's just an example. Please make sure you put your thesis as the last sentence of the introduction paragraph. This is literally my pet peeve. I've never had... A professor tell me to put it anywhere else. Um, that's the universal rule for a couple of reasons. One, um, this way everybody knows it's your thesis. Um, anyone who's reading your paper will know, okay, last sense of the intro thesis. The other reason is you want that to be the last thing your reader sees before they jump into the body of your paper. Um, we write introductions in what's called a funnel method where you start off really broad, you draw on your audience, then you get more and more specific um, with your information and your background till you get to the thesis. I will look like the poor woman in this picture doing a face palm and crying um, if I don't, if I can't find your thesis. It's not the first sentence of the paper. I don't know who teaches that. I know some people do in high schools, but it's not the first sentence of your paper. Should be the last sentence of your introduction. So now it's your turn. I want you to follow these steps. I want you to come up with a draft of what you think your thesis statement will be for essay number one. So make sure you review the essay number one directions. I'm gonna go over them in class, uh, in our first class, so that you know what you're doing. Um, but make sure you come up with a draft for it. It does not need to be perfect, it is a draft. So I don't want you to be focused on it being like my second draft or even a third draft, just a draft, even if it's just you know, argument or topic and reasons or divisions, that's fine. I'm gonna help you make it better. Um, but I do want you to start with something. Um, and the, the kind of, um, you know, if you've ever seen Karate Kid, I'm gonna Miyagi you here, is that writing itself is a process. Um, so it's not just, I'm gonna write a paper the night before it's due 
and do some quick revisions in the morning and submit it. That's not what we're doing anymore. We're going to work through writing processes and I want you to get over the fact or the habit of making everything perfect on the first try. I write multiple drafts of things. I start with brainstorming and then I come up with my thesis and then I create an outline. I do my research and then fill in my outline with my research and then I go and write a draft and then I edit my draft and revise my draft and move things around and use Grammarly to help me proofread. So it's not just something that happens in one day. Um, so I want you to start adopting that mindset of writing as a process. It's not a one step process. It takes multiple steps to get through it. So just a debrief again, this was a pretty quick lesson compared to some of the other ones. Uh, we're just looking at thesis statements. That's it, how to revise it, where it goes. Uh, but it is important, and I'll keep talking about this, and I'll review anything in class um, in our virtual meetings. But I do want you to remember that this is one of the most important things you will learn in this class. Everything you learn is important. Um, but this is really something that I like to focus on because it's the backbone, like I said, of every essay that you write. So don't forget your draft. Make sure you're submitting it so that I can give you feedback, bring any questions to class, and I will see you in our next virtual course.